Well, hello, we are getting close to Easter, which means maybe we're getting together with family, maybe we're just getting together with our immediate family, or we just wanna have something special to eat. So if you're from the Midwest, you may have heard of ham balls. If you're not, it's pretty much just a mixture of different meats that create a delicious meatball. Now, ham is traditional for Easter, and that's why a ham ball variation is very normal around these parts. Now, you can here buy something called ham loaf in the grocery store, you can't get that everywhere. So we're gonna make our own mixture of ham and other meats to make our ham balls, which are great for Easter because they have a sweet, tangy sauce with them. They're a super delicious meatball that has a slight sweetness to it, but is also just really offset with the different meats. And we're starting with ground ham. So ground ham is gonna help make these ham balls. And it has a lighter color, you can see to it. It has the flavor of the ham. And we're gonna offset that with some ground beef and some ground pork. So it's a really simple mixture, and it's one you can find a lot of places. And we just wanna get a few other things ready for it too. But what I first wanna make sure we do is have some ground graham crackers, and they're gonna be ground up. Now this is kind of a weird one. Now, it's really what we're doing, you know, think about it. When we do other meatballs, we'll do maybe either bread crumbs, or we'll do a cracker crumb. So what the graham crackers do, this is gonna so show my Midwestern roots here, is they add that sweetness. They do, they just make this a little bit sweeter. And growing up when grandma would make these, actually both my grandmas made these, my mom made these, it was always a treat because it was something you did not have often necessarily. But for special occasions we would have, or we, my sister and I would always ask for handballs. And when you open up church cookbooks around here, you see so many recipes because everyone has their version. But they all really center around the same idea of ground ham, beef, pork, some mixture of those. And they're just simple and they're really good. And what's great is you can make these ahead, either make them the day before, have them in the fridge or make them way ahead, uncooked, put them in the freezer and have them ready to go. So we have our crushed up graham crackers. Look at that. Super delicious, super simple. And you can use it, you know what? You could always keep a bag of this around and just keep it for pie crust too if you needed it. So now we have our mixture and we wanna make sure we have a few ingredients to go into it. So I want some onion and I don't want pieces of just chunky onion inside of it. So what I'm gonna do is cut my onion in half. I'm gonna take off any of that skin that we need to. And what we wanna do is just, just really shave off and really grind up some of this onion. So the best way to do that is with some type of grater. Grated onion in a meatball to me is what's gonna give you that essence of onion without the big chunks of raw onion. So we're just gonna take a box grater or whatever grater you have, and we're gonna just start grating up some of that onion. What this is gonna do is really create just an intense, beautiful onion flavor, but not pieces of onion that some go either uncooked or stay a different texture. We want them all to be roughly the same texture, and so that's why we grate them, because that just really helps. So look at that, look at that gorgeousness. That's all we need right there. And now we can just take that and add it right to the meat mixture. So it's ground up, you're getting some of the juice in there too, but then it will really incorporate evenly. So this is where you start just putting it all together. We have a couple eggs. They're gonna help us bind everything together. So we're gonna put those into a little bowl so I can whisk them. Because if you just put them in whole, it's kind of hard to whisk them together. So I'm gonna just put them in a small bowl and we're gonna just sit here with a little whisk. This will help incorporate them into the meat mixture more easily, which that's something I'm gonna be honest, you have to do pretty much by hand. So I put all the ingredients, get them around, and then put them in so we can just kind of do this in one fell swoop. So we have our eggs. Again, they're gonna help bind. They're gonna help create a nice cohesion inside of that that's just really good. Then we're gonna take our breadcrumbs that we ground up. We're gonna measure out what we need, which is just one cup. You always have to go a little bit over to make sure we get that. Right in they go. We're gonna put in milk. Now, I often, you know me, if you've ever followed me, I bake, I cook with whole milk. Why is that? It has more flavor, it has more fat in it, and fat carries flavor. We're gonna put in some salt, and I just measure it sometimes in the palm of my hand, dump that in there, it's a lot of meat. And now guys, this is the part where, yeah, it gets a little dirty, but this is the best way to do it. So I'm gonna use the best tools God gave me, and that was my hands. So I'm gonna make sure I really incorporate these all together, because you don't want pieces of different meats to have the texture where they cook differently. You want this to be very well incorporated, and you want all those ingredients to be well incorporated. So as gross as this could be, I'm gonna sit here and make sure I have it very well incorporated, then we're gonna start making balls, make a sauce, and we're gonna be ready to go. 
So I've been making the handballs now themselves and I have a greased nine by 13 here and I'm just putting them down, portioning them into their individual sizes and making sure they're in here somewhat evenly. Now I did start by using kind of a cookie scoop, but the thing is you have to just make sure you end up with the right amount. So you kind of have to at the end adjust for as needed. Sometimes if I don't do it perfect, I go back. You could weigh them out too. I don't do that. But what I do is what you can see, once I form the ball, I kind of just go back and forth in my hand like this and it eventually makes a nice smooth handball, which they just look nicer if they're more even like that. So when we pick up that last amount and we can see you just form it, go back and forth, back and forth, and it slowly creates a nice smooth handball. And this is why we really wanted to evenly mix this because otherwise you'd get pieces of say, all at once ground hamburger, that beef that would be separate from the ground ham and you want it all to be cohesive. So you can see there, look at that. And now they're just all nestled in there so perfectly. I mean, not perfect, but you know what I mean. So now I need to wash my hands before we make the sauce. The sauce is one of my best, like one of my favorite parts because it has a sweet tanginess to it that I just think is delicious. So after we soap and water our hands and dry them off, we can make this delicious sauce. So it starts with tomato soup as the base. Now I use home canned tomato soup. You can buy store-bought tomato soup, use it in here, it'll be just as good. Now this is, I said, in a special occasion thing, right? Which means in true Midwestern fashion, we're gonna put some brown sugar in it, which gives it those caramelly notes, gives it a slight stickiness, gives it that play of sweet, tangy, sour. It's just super good. We're gonna add in a little bit of Dijon mustard. Again, what does that do? It gives it that funk, gives it that tang, which I think is just super good. We also need to add in some apple cider vinegar, which is one of my favorite things to use, whether it's a dressing, whether it's anything else. And what I love about it is it has that, it's not just as strong or astringent as vinegar, white vinegar. It has a little bit more to it. So we're gonna measure off what we need here and we're gonna put it right in there. So here you can see where really we're gonna play up that sweet tanginess I was talking about. And then we need just a little hit of salt to balance it all out. And now we can just whisk this together. So we're whisking just to make sure that brown sugar gets dissolved somewhat. It will also now, this is gonna bake and this is gonna go into the oven. So it will dissolve there too. And what we're gonna do is just slowly whisk all that together. And that's the sauce. That's how easy this is. But do not downplay the sauce. This is what makes these, it makes them pretty special. And instantly I'm transported to one of my grandmas growing up, to home growing up. So. We're gonna pour this on and it's gonna be a lot of sauce, that's what we want. And I'm making sure to cover all the handballs, but while they are baking, we're gonna, every so often if we need to, pull them out and we're gonna make sure they can baste in the sauce because we want to give them kind of a glaze on top as they bake. We want that sticky, sweet, sour note sauce just kind of coming up over them and able to fill in all those gaps, it's super good. So, you can see there they are. We're gonna put this right into the oven we're gonna let that sauce caramelize, really become just gooey, a little bit sticky, but also fully cook the meatballs or handballs themselves. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. It's gonna smell like Easter and it's gonna taste like it really soon. I took the handballs out a few minutes ago. Look how beautiful and glazed they are. So what I did in the last like 20, 30 minutes, I took a baster, you could do it with a spoon too, but I would suck up some of that extra juice and kind of baste it over them. So it just baked on top and almost caramelized just a little bit. It just is for looks, but it also really cements in and caramelizes. That's what the brown sugar was for. So at this point you can see it feeds a crowd. That's what's great about these, or it gives you plenty of leftovers, which is great too. And they're portioned ready to go. Look at that, like pre-portioned, super simple. You can put a little bit of the sauce on top. I mean, if you're like me and the little kid in me, that was what you went for with that sauce and you needed it. So they're still hot, but that's never stopped me before. What I like is you can see it's well mixed, the meat. You don't get pockets in different looks. You just get one texture of the meat, which is what you want. It's good. It's delicious. It, to me, it's like, it tastes like a handball, which is what it should. If you haven't had a handball, let me try to explain. Ham has a different flavor. So you get a little bit more of that saltiness with the ham a little bit of that smokiness almost, but that's offset with the pork, with the beef, 
It's a really homogenous, beautiful mixture. It's set up and firm, but then it has that sweet, sour tanginess going on with the sauce, with that vinegar, with the brown sugar. It all is just working together with that little bit of tomato soup, which sounds like a weird ingredient, but you're gonna see how that plays really well into a sauce. These are great for Easter. These are great for any time. These are great for any kind of special occasion where you just wanna make a meal that can be honestly pretty easy for a main dish, feed quite a few people, and hey, if you want to make it ahead, throw this in the freezer before it's baked, let it thaw, put it in the oven, you're ready to go. That's the best part. So what I hope you do with this, I hope you make handballs this Easter and that you just enjoy them because that's the point. I also hope you share this video around and the rest because that's the point of good food. Share it around, help others find this food, find me, helps me, but also helps them find good food. Because if I can do this, I know and believe anybody out there can do this. So check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe, all my other recipes, they're all on there. Until next time, have a delicious Easter. That's the point.